Who was the biggest winner for the Dallas Cowboys in week one of the preseason? All that and more in this episode of Locked On Cowboys Podcast. You are Locked On Cowboys, your Locked daily Dallas Cowboys on. podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Locked Network, your on. team every day. Locked On. Locked On. Locked, Locked, Locked On. Locked On Cowboys. Locked On Cowboys. Welcome back to the Locked On Cowboys podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We'd like to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. I am your host, Marcus Mosier. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosier. And joining me today, as always, is Landon McCool. You can check him out on Twitter at McCoolBCB. Landon, we have Dallas Cowboys football we get to talk about. This is so exciting. Did you enjoy the game? I certainly did. I'm not going to waste a bunch of time talking about how I felt about it. Let's dive into the particulars of it because there is so much to get to, honestly. Yeah. Uh, it w- I got to say, I watched the first half and then I was like, uh, I forgot about preseason football. It gets it gets <laughs> kind of it gets kind of tricky after a while. But let's talk about some of the biggest winners of the preseason. For me, it's I think it's Jake Ferguson. He's the player that stood out the most to me early on in this game. He only played, I believe, nine snaps, uh, but he had three catches right out of the gate. One really nice catch uh, down the sideline. He even had a nice block in the run game. Man, I was impressed. It seems like he's really made that leap. Yeah, I mean, I think th- that's the thing about him that that has been really interesting watching this whole process. We, you know, the tight end room was one that we have had our eyes on because you know, obviously Schultz leaving, uh, you know, Schoonmaker coming in. Uh, it, we weren't exactly sure how that thing was going to kind of suss itself out. I think what's interesting is just how much Ferguson has taken that job and, and really run with it. Right. And, and, you know, we, you, we talked about in the preseason that, that we felt like he had a lot of yak ability, a lot of catch the ball and run. Uh, and I think you saw on a couple different plays, that sort of player, right. That guy that yeah. kind of runs out, runs a curl, gets open at the top of his route, catches a tough pass. Uh, and is it is physical and is able to kind of run through some arm tackles to get an extra yard or two, right? But then on top of that, what we saw was something that uh, part of his game that I don't know that we've seen a lot of, and that's getting up the seam and, and mm-hmm. getting athletic and getting up in the air and and making a catch above his head outstretched. And and I think that's something that's going to be really important for him if he's going to want to take over kind of yeah. the the majority of those tight end snaps because i think that's a route that that you know I, I, dave hellman i think pointed out that's a route that that uh, dak likes to throw a yeah. lot and, and yeah. so if he could find a way i mean he you know there, there's reasons that we have thought that he wasn't necessarily that guy he, he doesn't necessarily have a great vertical he, we haven't seen uh, uh much uh, that that it lends to the idea that he's like some above the rim type player we did see him hurdle a guy last year, uh, but but outside of that, not much. So so to see that kind of aspect of his game uh, kind of develop uh, just shows you just where he's come and as far as reliable. And I just want to throw in one thing real quick. In the last year, he's had, between preseason and regular season, he's had 25 targets uh, uh, thrown his way. He has converted 22 of those 25 targets. So he has r- really shown you that, that he has those kind of reliable hands you need in a tight end. Uh, honestly, as someone who I thought was going to be sharing this job a lot more kind of going into the preseason, uh, I'm pretty much ready to declare him tight in one, not only tight in one, but like kind of uh, in a Dalton Schultz type role, right? Where he's going to get the vast majority of those those snaps. Ferguson was great in this game, but I think the other thing that factors into this is, uh, listen, I'm going to talk bad about my guy. Here we go. Here we go. But I don't, Sean McEwen and Peyton Hendershot did not play well in this game. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't want to spend a lot of time on there because we're going to try to be kind of positive today, but Sean McEwen just struggled as a blocker, especially like in line stuff. Now he's better when you get him out in space and he's good there. Peyton Hendershot, I know messed up one of the run blocks. He just took the wrong guy. Um, It's not, it's not all that uncommon for Hendershot to kind of get some of these mental mistakes, you know, just get them wrong, but it just feels like Ferguson is just checking every box and he's the most consistent tight end on this team. Yeah, and, and and honestly, Hendershot doesn't have to worry about Ferguson, I think, at this point. There's another guy that uh, we'll talk about, I'm sure, a little bit later yeah. that is nip, nipping at both him and McKeon's he- heels at the tight end position, which I think is starting to get a lot more attention. Yep. So, uh, yeah, I, I think a lot of these guys have got to kind of uh, course correct a little bit, and I think McKeon specifically uh, needed to play better football. Yeah. We're going to talk about some of the rookies that we were excited to see, including Du Savan. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about Luke Schoonmaker, Mozzie Smith in the next segment, but who else 
impressed you uh, for the Cowboys in this game? Well, I mean, there's uh, you mentioned one of the three that I, I think really stuck out to me, and the other one that we absolutely have to talk about was Jalen Tolbert. I think Jalen Tolbert had an incredible game. He showed you exactly what we, the people that have been in uh, training camp, uh, have been trying to talk about with Tolbert and, and mention about what we've been seeing at camp. I think you saw it. And, and honestly, I think that, uh, that that reception that he made – uh, where the ball deflected off of the defensive back. It was such a great microcosm for what is happening with Jalen Tolbert right now. Last year, that would have happened. Tolbert would have panicked, freaked out, not found the ball, would have been intercepted. And, and I, that that level of calm and cool and collectedness that he said and, and watching the ball pop up, and he, he tracked it the whole way, snatched it out of the air, and then was able to kind of turn around. You saw that throughout the game, right? Whether it was on his touchdown reception where he had an in-breaking route, he saw the linebacker coming out to cover him, and he gets drifts a little bit further upfield. You actually watch him in-break, take a left foot step up the field so that he can clear the linebacker a little bit more and give uh, Greer, I think, or was it Cooper? Yeah, it was, Rush, Greer. Yep. It was Greer. It gave Greer more room to throw the ball a little bit further upfield to get, to get into that hole in the zone for an easy catch and touchdown. Uh, and then even the the... <laughs> The the uh, the offensive pass interference, which was You're not going to knock him on that one. Oh, uh, absolutely not. That was one of the best plays of the game, and honestly, uh, you know, it's preseason for the refs too. Uh, th- thank you, Hawk League, for God's sakes. Uh, yeah, so he he wins early with his fo- footwork on on the route, gives himself enough cushion on the sideline to to you know make the play when it, when the ball arrives, creates separation, uh, able to elevate, grab the ball rotate protect the ball get both feet down uh uh, jalen tolbert is ready like he's ready he's taking that next step this was what we had to see we had to see him kind of translate this from the practice Mm -hmm. field into the game he dominated the game he looked like he didn't belong with the rest of the players in the field uh i'm excited to see what jalen tolbert brings to the regular season another year two guy that looks like he's ready is damon clark and i mean just the first quarter alone I saw enough. Like he's flying sideline to sideline. He's getting in the backfield, making plays. Uh, there was a, a a pass. I'm trying to remember who it was to, but basically it was to a running back, and he clicked and closed so fast and helped them get off the field. I, I'm almost ready just to put him in bubble wrap and say, yeah. okay, we'll see you week one because he's he's ready to go. Well, I mean, I think we have to say, I mean, first of all, yes, Clark was all over the place. It felt like he was making almost every tackle. Him and Marquise Bell, I felt like we're just basically making all the tackles early on in this yeah. game. Uh, and 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 he was just everywhere. I mean, he's just flying to the sideline to sideline, no problem. His speed has always been evident, but but I think the confidence that he's playing with has really unlocked that speed in a new he's way. He's seeing things quicker than he did last year. Yeah, and it's just and 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 it's it's just increased his play speed to a way that he's just so much faster than everybody else that's on the field. It's 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 very very clear. Uh, I will say this too. I think another reason why you should consider maybe putting him into bubble wrap is that it felt like there were tons of good linebackers out last night on, yeah, on, on the Cowboys. We'll talk I want to see more of those guys. guys. Yeah, we'll talk about some more of these in the next segment. But I do think that the linebacker depth was really shined last night. Uh, but but uh, without a doubt that, that the guy above all those guys was Clark and he was just a, a menace uh, for, for the Jacksonville offense throughout the night. Let's talk about some of the rookies, because I know that's what you guys are excited about. You want to hear about Mozzie Smith, Luke Schoonmaker. We will do that next. This episode is brought to you by Underdog. August is here and you know what that means. It is the official start of fantasy football drafting month. Get championship ready for your home league by trying out best ball on underdog fantasy. It's so easy. All you have to do is do one live snake draft, which is my favorite part, but then there's no waivers, no trades and underdog will set your best lineup every single week. Try it out with underdogs, best ball mania tournament. The largest fantasy football contest of all time is back and it's even bigger than ever with $15 million of total prizes up for grabs, including an absurd $3 million going to the winner. Last year, the winner actually drafted their team in July. So get on it. Start drafting your teams now. Don't wait until the preseason over is over. Do it right now. Visit underdogfantasy.com or find them in the App Store and sign up with promo code LOCKEDON to get your first deposit doubled up to $100. That is underdog fantasy promo code Locked On. Welcome back to the Lot Done Cowboys podcast. Every day or so. on tomorrow's show, we're going to break down the Cowboys practice from Monday. I'm sure we'll get tons of news and notes out of that one. So 
be sure to tune in. Landon, let's talk about the Cowboys rookies. We'll start with Mozzie Smith, who had a little bit of an up and down day, but I think you saw the potential there from Mozzie. Yeah, I mean, I think what we're seeing is is the trajectory, right? Like he's not a finished product by any stretch of the imagination, but just his physical ability, his strength, and his power is enough to kind of already raise the floor of where we were last year, right? Like, so I, I think that there was times when as he played more, he got tired and he started to play a little bit high, and then that yeah. caused some issues at times. But I mean, you saw it at different points. He's getting through the, on the other line of scrimmage, just wrecking run designs. Uh, there was obviously a play where he literally threw his blocker uh, onto the ground as he made the tackle. There was another play where he knifed into the backfield and literally absorbed a, gar a pulling guards uh, block on power and basically disrupted the play, had a couple of different pressures at different points. Uh, I thought he looked really good. It, 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 is it perfect? Absolutely not. I mean, he's he's got major technique stuff that he needs to clean up on. Uh, there's, there's still a, a kind of an inconsistency to his – uh, snap, which again, that's just about doing it more and more and about getting more comfortable with it. Uh, he has all the ability in the world. He, he's going to be a good player. Uh, it's going to be one of those situations that he's going to be a, a completely different player by the end of the season than he is now. Uh, but the player that he is now is good enough to go out there and, and wreck shop a little bit. You're not relying on him to go out and, and be uh, the force of your defense. You're you're you're, yep. you're relying on him to go out and be a major part of this defense uh, in, in a specialty area that he, he clearly can handle. So I think you saw all, all positives in that sense. Uh, there's definitely tons to clean up there, but I think what you're looking for in that type of player, uh, you saw in Spades last night in just the way that he's able to physically move bodies, throw people around, and disrupt run run schemes all all, all night long. I think the last first round pick for the Cowboys that didn't start in week one, I think was Mike Jenkins, the, the corner they drafted in 2008. Mm. Do you think Mozzie's going to end up starting for the Cowboys or no? Uh, yeah. I mean, I think so. I, I, I mean, I, I think starting again is the kind of the, a bad standard do, do, for all. Do you think he's going to play starter level snaps for the Cowboys early? I in do. Season? Yeah, I do. I think that he's going to go out there and, and he's going to be absolutely part of this mix. And, okay. and you know, I, I would say he starts out with an equal number of snaps as the other nose tackles. Okay. And then it increases as he gets more and more. Comfortable. Okay. Uh, let's talk about Luke Schoonmaker, who the Cowboys drafted in the second round. I, we were not quite sure if he was going to play at all in the preseason, but he started to practice last week. And yep. lo and behold, he was on the field, mostly in the second half of this game. Didn't play a ton. Uh, did have one little catch on a hitch route in this game. Uh, I know you didn't get to see a ton of him in this one from watching the film, but from the little that you did, what did you see? Yeah, it was just good to see him out there, right? I, I, I think he clearly shows you that he uh, has the kind of athleticism that belongs. He's big. I mean, again, I, I've been guy. talking about this. He's clearly the bigger, one of the biggest, if not the biggest tight end on the, in the room. Uh, but he moves well. So I, I, I think, you know, we, we saw a little bit of him getting mix, mixing it up a little bit as a blocker, and I think he looked good there. Uh, I think he's still getting comfortable running the routes. You know, yeah. I think that that's yeah. part of it. And I, I think in that comfort, as you mentioned, probably is – still tied to his comfort with his foot. Uh, so uh, I, I think that that will get better as time goes on. But but I think that uh, for the most part, it was a good start for a guy that, you know, basically started practicing this week, uh, was able to get into the game, get some snaps, and, and did some good things. I think the Cowboys are going to use him a lot as a blocker early on yeah. in the season. And as he gets more comfortable as a blocker, maybe that's when we'll start to see him be used as more of a re receiver, more of a downfield threat at receiver. Still think Jake Ferguson's going to handle a big load in the passing game, at least early in the season. Let's go to the third round pick, the Marvin Overshawn, who I mean, you want to talk about one of the biggest winners from this game. I thought he yeah. looked unbelievable. Yeah, absolutely. Was just, uh, I mean, when Clark didn't get there, the Overshawn was there and, yeah. and, and, and I think was flying around knifing through the, into the backfield. You know, we saw a little bit of the struggles that we expected to see, right? There were a couple of different times. It felt like he was struggling to get off blocks. That's not terribly surprising, just based on you know what we know That's about him. Rookie linebackers, guys. just not just yeah. him. It's just yeah, it, they, it, they struggle with that. Yeah, absolutely. And 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 I think that when he wasn't asked to have to do that, he's flying around. He's get, getting around guys. He's finding a way to the football. He's making plays. I, I thought he showed you exactly what the Cowboys were excited about with him. Um, he was a guy that I think a lot of us kind of scratched our heads a little bit when we when we saw the draft pick. We trusted Quinn. That, that he would have a role and a plan for him. And frankly, I mean, he's come out and looked so good just as a pure linebacker that uh, it, it may, it's making a lot more sense now. Feels very much like he's already 
linebacker three on this team. I think he started Maybe. this game uh, with Damone Clark. He played he over did. Jabril Cox. Jabril Cox, mm-hmm. who, again, I'm a big fan of, didn't play a single snap in the first half of this game. It was mm-hmm. all of Clark and Overshawn. Uh, Malik Jefferson actually played a little bit uh, ahead of Jabril Cox. He got banged up in this game, but Overshawn looked really well, really good. Uh, we're going to skip a couple guys, but I want to go to to Deuce Vaughn really quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I see it. I mean, you can see yeah. it. It's, yeah. He's got something. And yeah. I, it, to me, honestly, it wasn't even the run. The, the runs were really good. He, he looked explosive. He made the guys cut. It was the Texas route that he ran at, near the mm-hmm. goal line mm-hmm. where the ball was thrown high. Maybe it was just thrown on target, but Deuce Vaughn's so small. <laughs> uh, it yeah. was thrown high, but he so he dusted the linebacker so easily that created so much separation. It's like you're going to be able to find ways to get this guy involved in the offense. It's not going to be hard. Oh, yeah. And, and, and I'll even throw in another part to make you even more excited, right? When was the last time you saw a Cowboys offensive line execute screens the way that they were last yeah. night? Yeah. Well, now, it's, imagine, it's easy when you can hide your running back. Well, even. I was just going to say, now imagine, because they actually did those mostly with Davis and, and with Dowdle. Now imagine you're you're able to run and execute, execute screens like that, and you're throwing it to a guy like Vaughn. That could make it super impossible. So uh, there were a lot of things about Vaughn's game last night that were exciting, including kind of finally seeing him you know, take full contact and, and yeah. to see exactly what – the results were and he was able to bounce off a lot of that stuff there was one run that, that they, they showed that the guy tripped him in the hole that man i i think he probably would have housed if he if he if he hadn't um I, I do think that that you know you saw exactly what we've all been hoping to see here uh from this guy and, and he is going to be a weapon for this this team uh it's going to be interesting to see exactly how the cowboys deploy him um I know we're talking about rookies, but I just want to touch on the other running backs really quickly. Yes, I think, we should. I think Malik Davis had a very Malik Davis day, like just a no nonsense kind of between the tackles runner. Rico Dowdle is so frustrating, man. He's so frustrating because he's so talented. And you saw that on the reception that he had where, I mean, just making guys miss and he's explosive and he's big, but just for whatever reason, it doesn't seem like it all clicks together for him, but man, he's, he's fun to watch. I've got the exact opposite take, honestly. I, I think that Dowdle was fantastic outside of that, outside of the fumble, obviously, which was, uh, you know, unfortunate and sort of fluky because somebody used Turpin as a weapon against Dowdle. Uh, I thought Malik Davis was the one who was incredibly frustrating to me. I, I saw mm-hmm. mental errors. I just saw a lack of explosion. You know, that almost pick six that was thrown out to him was because he didn't come back to the ball. He yeah. missed on a pass mm-hmm. protection situation. Uh, that's that's where i really worried about malik davis is if you can't pass protect and you're not highly athletic and you're not going to give you big splash plays what are what are we doing guys i mean and i I, listen i like him i like his ability between the tackle but it's just the rest of that stuff is he needs a lot of work yeah and and i think if you're going to be a well-rounded back like that's your play style then he's going to need to be a bit a little bit more (laughs) well-rounded yeah exactly and 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 on top of that like he can't make mental errors like no like, I mean, Dowdle has has room to be to do that because he's explosive and he's big and he's strong and he'll take a line, he'll declete a linebacker in, in, in pass pro if he needs to. Da- Davis has got to be like precise and accurate yeah. and and like the the smart running back, right? If he wants to take that job because he's he's kind of behind the eight ball athleticism wise compared to, to where Dowdle is. So, um, yeah, I, I need to see more from Davis for sure. I just need to see more from both of those guys. I want one of those two players just to be a little bit more consistent, cut down on the mental layers. Don't turn the ball over because to me right now, Deuce Vaughn isn't RB two on this team. We, we talked about this last week, but he's, he might just be your second best running back. I, I got to find out who that third running back is on this team. I, yeah, I, I think that Dowdle is the guy is RB two right now, but, but as far as like, who are you looking to give the ball the, the, the most it's, it's yep. Pollard and it's Vaughn. And I think that's, that's, that's good. That's clear. Yep. It's, it, there's a lot of other touches that you need to give somebody. It's probably going to be Dowdle and Lupke as it stands right now. All right. Let's talk about the offensive line, which actually played a little bit better than I anticipated. We'll get to that next. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Football season is about to kick off, and FanDuel is giving you a chance to win all season long because right now when you bet on a Super Bowl winner, you get a bonus bet every single time they win in the regular season. So if you bet on the Cowboys to win the Super Bowl, which is not a bad bet, now you win 12 games, that's 12 bonus bets that you can use to bet on 
spreads, player props, over-unders. I like futures bets. Uh, I like to go bet on who's going to win the division or who's going to make the playoffs. Just pick any team to win the Super Bowl, and you'll get a bonus bet for every single victory. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and start earning bonus bets with America's number one sports book. That is FanDuel.com slash locked on. Welcome back to the Lockdown Cowboys podcast. Landon, we are talking about the Cowboys offensive line, which when I saw the lineup going into the game, it was Austin Richards at left yeah. tackle. It was no Chuma Dogo was out. It was Matt Well, let's go at right tackle. I think Josh Ball was playing right guard. Matt Farniak at left was it Farniak yeah. at left guard. Farniak and Brock, left Hoffman. Guard. Mm-hmm. Brock Hoffman at center was like, ooh, this is this is gonna be rough. And it was yeah. for a little bit against Jacksonville starters, but for the most part. I think they played pretty well. Yeah, I mean, actually, kind of going back and watching, one thing that I was really surprised about was how much Jacksonville blitzed. Yeah, like Jacksonville was blitzing like on second down, and, yeah. and it was it seemed a little bit overkill, especially when you're playing your ones against our twos. Like, all right, uh, but but you know, look, I, I think going back and watching it, like, let's go a little bit, uh, let's go right to left a little bit. Okay, right. I think I think that well, let's go is on schedule. Right. Like he yeah. is, he looks to me where he's supposed to be for where he, his, you know, uh, uh, developmental second year tackle. Right. Um, he went out there, showed the athleticism that we, that we've seen from he him before. Move. He can move, he can get in front of folks. Uh, there's, you know, it, he, he's got the problems that some of these second, a lot of second year tackles do. He, he needs to have a little bit more precise punch. He needs to have a little bit more oomph in his punch, which I think yep. another year in the weight room will help. Uh, he's not quite driving people off the the ball as a as a run blocker, but he is more than capable against you know. Look, and let's let's set the stage here. They face Jacksonville's first defense, which features two defensive ends who were drafted in the top ten. One of which is the number one player overall last yeah, year Trayvon that was Walker. drafted. Yeah, and and the fact is is that well, let's go uh, from from my eyeballs maybe allowed. One pressure? I, 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 don't I got know the numbers the here. Numbers. Yeah. The entire game. I think he played 49 total snaps. He gave up two pressures, but no QB hits. And and, and that's incredibly impressive. I mean, obviously, a majority of that wasn't necessarily against the first team defensive line. But still, the fact that you gave you you, you performed that way, the way that he did, uh, really shows you something. You I know? think you could play him in an NFL game at right tackle, give him help, and you can get out of the game that way. Now, he's not going to help you as a run blocker. And I think you, you mm-hmm. mentioned that. Like, yeah. he's just not there. Yeah. But I think yeah. as a pass blocker, I think you feel comfortable enough to put him in the game to not have him wreck your offense. Yeah. As a guy, like, look – do we have a long-term solution, a positive long-term solution at tackle? Maybe not quite yet, but uh, I think you've got the floor for what happens in emergency during a game. Yep. I think you can throw, well, let's go in and he won't get you killed. Right. Yep. Uh, I think, you know, you moved in one spot to Josh ball. I think Josh ball had one of his better games was actually able to kind of move some people a little bit, you know, like there was some miscommunication, I think between him and Davis at a, 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 on a pass protection situation, um, and I think that there were times when he got beat a little bit, but I, I think ball has played a little bit better football than, uh, you know, than he has pre- previously sure. recently. Right. Brock Huffman. I, I don't know. He is the worst of the five. I don't see it, man. I just yeah, don't see do it with I. Hoffman. I really don't even understand why they moved Hoffman, uh, to center and Farniak out to guard though. I guess the, the, the thought process is that maybe Farniak could play at a level, that you make him the backup left guard. I think that's I thought I thought that's the point is to have Farniak be able to back up both guard spots. I think Farniak played his his. I think this was Farniak's best showing so far this preseason. Yep. Um, I think you, specifically you saw a several different plays where uh, you know he you he comboed blocked with uh, Awesome Richard on a fourth and one. They got the first down running behind them. There was another time when they passed off that stunt. I think it was on the Tolbert touchdown actually mm-hmm. between him, him and Awesome where and this was the, still the first team defensive line they they, they executed a, a TE stunt and they passed it off without any problems gave uh, the Greer the time he needed to throw the football uh, so I think Farniak showed you a little bit and now I'm going to clear the runway for me to talk about Awesome Richards because this is the guy that we all need to be discussing mm-hmm. because what what no one's really just saying is that Awesome Richards basically pulled a Tyler Smith yeah, 100% the game. Yep. like basically has been working exclusively as left guard throughout the training camp. And may I point out mostly with the third team, 
you know? And mm. so he has basically, you know, Chuma Doga gets hurt in practice on uh, on Thursday, I think it was, right? Or, or the last the last practice of the week. And Wednesday, Thursday, yep. They basically throw Awesome Richards out at left tackle. And that was the shock that I think we all experienced when we saw the lineup going in there. So the fact is that they were able to do that, throw Awesome Richards out of left tackle, and frankly, he played incredible. Like, 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 didn't give up any pressures or, or like I said, any that I saw. I, I, I'm interested what the PFF numbers are there. He was, he was moving bodies. He was able to kind of get people in front of folks. Like, there was one play where you know that everyone's pointing out that like the the, the sack that clearly wasn't his fault. He pushed the guy past the pocket. Greer's got to step up into that pocket. There were three or four other plays exactly like that one that I saw on tape where Austin did the exact same thing and Greer steps up into the pocket and delivers a, a pass and, and completes a, uh, you know, for, for completion. So, I mean, look, you asked a guy last minute to switch out to left guard after practicing only left, uh, uh, left tackle after only practicing left guard. It's a fourth or fifth round pick from, you know, university of North Carolina. And he goes out and, and performs the way he does against Josh Allen and against the, whoever he else he's fa- facing. Uh, we should be shouting from the rooftops about this. Like you suddenly now have a solution or at least the workings of something where you're not being going to be held hostage by Chuma Doga's, you know, hyperextended knee for hopefully the the length of the, the first few, the length of the injury. you got a guy that you could actually throw out there potentially. Uh, and, and, and I, you know, I'm interested to see what he can do with a guard too, because maybe suddenly he becomes your pure left side backup yep. and, and you've got a, a working offensive line solution couple things on uh, on Richards here. So he played, uh, I think the number was 59 total snaps, gave up two pressures. The sack that he allowed, this is quotation marks if you're mm-hmm. not watching on YouTube, PFF did not give him that sack. They gave that actually to the quarterback. They, that's a quarterback Good. stat because that is a quarterback up, set. Because yep. the quarterback backed up into a spot where – it's not his fault. I just don't want to go. You got to step into the pocket. Yes, you can't not drift out and back. That's where yeah. the that's where the offensive lineman is distributing the defensive linemen that are coming too fast. Fourteen matchups against Trayvon Walker. Zero pressures allowed. Not bad. Hello, hello. Uh, nine pressures, or sorry, nine matchups against Caleb on Chase on uh, people that I think Cowboy fans know very well. Zero mm-hmm. pressures allowed, and actually. I was uh, talking to our guy, Andrew uh, Wiggs, uh, who does the Locked On Jags podcast. He was so discouraged by Chase Hunt's performance against Richards that he thinks that the Jags should just go ahead and cut him. And it sounds like they might because they're bringing in Jadavion Clowney. Uh, or they brought him in <laughs> yesterday to potentially be time, but Yeah, but they brought him in. Him, right? Yeah, exactly. Richards played so well in this game. I, I, I'm shocked. To, to only give up two total pressures in this game, and both of them were more miscommunications than just being mm-hmm. beaten off the line. I, he, I don't think he's your left tackle backup or anything like that, but I think he's somebody that I'm really excited about now kind of down the roster a little bit. This is an eye opening performance by him. And this is exactly why, you know, in practice last week, I was like, he needs second team reps. We got to see what yeah. we've got in this guy. Like, and now you've seen him, you, you put him in second team reps against first teamers and you saw what he could do. So I think it's time to accelerate the, the timetable t- on this guy a little bit. Maybe this guy's a little bit better than we expected. Maybe he can help you as a backup this season. Uh, you know, maybe it's an in game die, you know, last chance situation, but still, uh, it, it, this should be exciting for all Cowboys fans. But this is why you draft left tackle prospects and move them into guard because you just never know when you're going to get into a situation like the Cowboys had this week where they're just out of tackle options to play at left tackle. So you slide Richards over there not expecting a lot. And all of a sudden he puts together a fantastic game. So really, really encouraged not only with him, but both of the tackles. Yeah. I want to see how they play next week. Uh, they play at Seattle, I believe. Mm-hmm. How do they handle the, the crowd noise there? How do they handle the pass rush? Uh, I'm sure we will talk about it then. That is it for today's show. Uh, we want to thank you for making Locked On Cowboys your first listen every day. Again, every day, we'll be back tomorrow to break down the Cowboys practice. Go check out our show on YouTube. We are free and available on all platforms. Go follow Landon on Twitter at McCoolBCB. I'm at Marcus underscore Mosier. We'll see you right back here tomorrow.